Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to go over the processing that I use to complete my latest image uh, M81 and M82 taken with my AT115 uh, triplet refractor. The camera I use is my venerable ZWO ASI 1600 Mono. I have a mix of filters. Let me pull up the exposure here. So this is with an astronomic L2 luminance filter. We got 11 hours. Uh, using ZWO red, green, blue filters, one hour per filter. And then 20 hours of HA using an Astrodon 5 nanometer filter. And uh, the reason I have so much HA here is because I had a lot of uh, moonlit nights. And, um, oh, that's Mr. Thor worry about that uh, but anyway I had a lot of moonlit nights and um, you know it, it's it's really hard to get RGB and luminance with a big moon out there now in this video I'm basically going over my workflow I'm not going to show uh, specifics on how I did each step uh, but everything that I've done uh, in the processing of this I have examples of detailed steps in other videos on my YouTube channel so if you're uh, new to me uh, please check out my other channel uh, subscribe it and uh, look for different videos so one thing that I do here is I mix the HA in with my RGB data and also with the luminance data uh, and that process is outlined in a video I have on my channel called uh, boosting your images with HA all right, so let's get started here. Uh, here's my luminance. This is after running dynamic background extraction. Now, one trick uh, for running dynamic background extraction, I'm in a Bortle 5. And so I was really hoping to get more IFN out there. You can see a little bit, a little bit of it in here. Uh, for those that don't know, the IFN is dust uh, that's on the edge of our galaxy that's being illuminated by the stars in our galaxy so it it's dust that's in between these galaxies and our own galaxy but it's it's very faint it's very dim and it's um, a popular thing for amateur astrophotographers to try to pull out it does take a lot of exposure and it does take some skill and processing to uh, get it to show nice now of course you could go to a uh, dark skies a border one sky with a one-shot color camera and spend enough time on it and you have dust everywhere so uh, if you're really having trouble pulling the the dust out the IFN out uh, go to border one <laughs> so anyway the tip is that we use dynamic background extraction to eliminate or significantly reduce light gradients that we have in our images right so this can be caused by the moon or caused by light pollution usually by light pollution uh, for me the eastern part of the sky is the most light polluted and so I definitely get some of that but the thing is dynamic background extraction can destroy uh, the IFN it can just come because it's so faint especially in, in an image like mine with only 11 hours of exposure uh, if I'm trying to preserve that, I need to be careful in my application of dynamic background extraction. And so with all the stars in the way, it could be difficult to know exactly where to put those reference points. And so I'll actually make a linear starless version of this image. And we got it right here. And we can clearly see where the dust is. So when I make my reference points uh, for dynamic background extraction, I know where not to put uh, not to put my um, uh, my reference points. And I do believe, yeah, see, so I put reference points there, there, and there. I uh, dynamic background extraction needs at least three points, and uh, you can see. This is what it looks like on the Starless version. Now, I didn't use this. Uh, Starless um, or star removal on wide field galaxy shots are hit or miss. I mean, you can see here that 
uh, Star Exterminator, which I used, did a pretty decent job of leaving, all, leaving behind all those little uh, background galaxies. But it does stuff to the core of the primary galaxies. And so I've even run into situations where you're masking it off and it's still somehow pulling data out. So I typically don't use uh, star removal on these wide field galaxy shots, except for maybe making masks that I can modify and then attack the stars uh, that way. And so anyway, uh, with dynamic background extraction, this is the luminance channel that I ended up with. Now RGB, here's what my RGB is. You can see some gradients. I have an issue, uh, it looks like with my um, flats for the green filters, it wasn't uh, taking out, it wasn't correcting the little vignetting corners that I got here. And that's why you see red here because green's actually not being uh, corrected. That said, the colors are actually not too bad here. And the way I did this is it's a it's a little bit of a, a trick and it works it works great sometimes with mono cameras is you use a linear fit. And you put blue in here. You use blue as your reference and you apply this linear fit to your green and red and then once you do that uh, you tend to get pretty good color correction here without having to mess around with any of the other various forms of color correction. Uh, M81 in particular is really hard to get the colors right sometimes so I was glad that uh, using the linear fit method got me at a good, a, a good starting point with the colors. And then of course using uh, dynamic background extraction on RGB gets, gives us this. So I mean this great example of how powerful tool dynamic background extraction is because it just completely eliminated all of the gradient including issues that I was having with the flats. So really nice job with that. And let's take a quick look at the HA data. This is HA with dynamic background extraction on there. I did 10 minute subs which seems to work really well and it did a nice job picking up all those HA regions and of course M82 with these filaments coming out. I uh, even got a hint of this of the little HA cap that's in there. Super faint uh, region. There's actually stuff all the way out here but I mean I would probably need like a hundred hours of HA to be able to pull that out. Alright so I've got my luminance channel, my HA channel, and my color channel ready for the next step. Uh, and the next step is to combine the HA data with the RGB data and also with the luminance data. You want to you want to get that HA data in both. Uh, that way when you add your luminance to the color data you get to retain all those uh, intricate details. Now the method that I used uh, had three parts to it. The first part is we need to really isolate the HA regions uh, from the rest of this and we use this pixel math formula right here. Now I have a video uh, that talks about boosting your RGB data with HA uh, that goes into detail over this uh, process here. So if you're new to my channel please subscribe and then look for that video and that'll walk you through this process. It works great on galaxies and I have found it to even work great on uh, on nebula and stuff like that. For example, I, ha I think in that video I used the ghost nebula because the HA has a lot of the detail but you still want some of the dust lanes that HA doesn't reveal that you do get with the uh, broadband data. Now, like everything, uh, you have to experiment, and this formula has a variable identified as Q. That's what we use in our symbols. And you play around with this value until you get something uh, that looks good. And of course, you create a new image, and I provided the image ID of HA clean. And what I ended up with after running that step. 
is this right here. So this image emphasizes the HA regions. Uh, these stars look funny, ignore that. The, that's, that doesn't do anything. And of course, there's all that beautiful HA coming out of M82 and even got a hint of that cap still. So the next step is to add this to your color data and that is the next pixel math process. And so this is the formula. We're basically taking that HA clean and adding it to the red channel. Uh, we're not doing anything to the green and we are doing a little bit, adding a little bit of that information to the blue. And what I end up with is enhanced RGB. And actually, I close that too quick. I wanted to show that we have this B here, this B value. That's, that's our boost value. So that's another variable. And this one you have to play around with. So my first version of the enhanced RGB, right? I mean, it looks a little pink. We got too much here. So basically what this is showing is that, that boost value is too high. Right, you can see even the HA in the background. We don't want any of this pink in here. We just want, want it isolated to the area. So you have to play with that variable. And I think this is probably where I ended up with. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. Now this is just the color, right? We still gotta add it to uh, the luminance channel. And so it's pretty much the same thing. And again with the boost value and it should have created an enhanced luminance and here it is this one is stretched uh, but the main reason you want to do this is so that all these regions are also represented represented in the luminance channel all right, so with the luminance, next is to go ahead and run deconvolution. If you guys have been following me, you know I like to run deconvolution on almost all of my images. I'm not going to go over it in this video, but just like with the HA, I've got a video on my channel dedicated to deconvolution. So if you're new to PixInsight or just want to see how I, uh, how I go about de using deconvolution, please check that video out. So next. I'm going to step through all the processing steps after we put everything together. So this is our RGB, right? Now I've blurred it out so I can apply the luminance. And there's luminance. Now we see a mask on here. And so we're going to start doing some work on this. There we go. So now I'm doing work on the galaxies, right? They look blown out, but they're not. There's a lot of information in there. And so we just need to use a combination of masks and uh, curves. All right. So this is as far as I went on this workspace. We got all the images combined and I did some initial stretching. I got some nice contrast in there and a lot of times when I hit a point like this I like to make a copy and move to a new workspace. And so this workspace here I'm doing, this is the same image uh, that we started off with here. And now I'm doing a lot of intricate work and I made a I, I made an incredible amount of masks. I used uh, some color masks, of course, range masks, and I used uh, game scripts. So I don't know if uh, if any of you guys are familiar with that. There are some videos out there on other channels that cover the game script, uh, but basically, this lets you create custom masks and. I'll just demonstrate it really quick because I wanted to, for example, 
pull more information out here. And a simple range mask is just not going to get it done. So if we wanted to mask off just this area here and do some work, I could go to multipoint, click add, and then you can actually custom shape the mask. Now I'm just kind of going through this quickly, but I just want to give an idea of the the power you can have with a mask like this. So I'll create this mask and then I will uh, soften the edges with a range mask and then you can use this to just work in this little area with curves. And uh, that's, I did a lot of that. And so that's what we're going to see. So I'll step through all of this. Clearly I've got a attention on M82 right now. Uh, let's look at the mask. Yep. So of course, I'm trying to pull back this core. Let me zoom in as I step through. Yeah, is that a game mask on there? Yeah, uh, let's back up. Yeah, so you can see I use a game mask just to focus on this area here. just to pull out what I could. And I think it did pretty good. And you can also see that naturally this area here was so was close to being overexposed. I think maybe it is just a little bit. So I created a separate mask to work on these outer areas and then a different mask to pull back on saturation and the color in there to kind of tone it down so I didn't have that much separation. And now we're working on M81. I think my uh, luminance channel was really strong and it kind of overshadowed some of the color initially. So it took a lot of work to get it back and then to get the color just right on those um, on those regions there. And so this is pretty close to where I ended up. Now I did do some additional work, really fine work. I had masks that isolated just these little patches here. So I did spend some significant time uh, on this target processing it. So anyway this is where I ended up with and then I entered what I call my cool down period which is uh, when I finish processing an image it's it's hard to do but I try to give it a day uh, to sit on it. Um, it's amazing how out of the blue some idea will pop on my head and I'll think of a different way to do uh, to tweak something in the image or a different way to process it. Uh, if uh, you follow my community tab on my YouTube channel this is the picture that I shared uh, as uh, after I finished processing it. And I did mention in the comments of that picture that this was uh, the cool down period. And so after sitting on it a day I went into Photoshop tweaked it some more, more contrast, more colors, and, um, and then I even brought it back into uh, Pix and Sight, and I did another game mask on this area up here and pulled this up. So anyway, the final image that I ended up with is this. Uh, so let's, let's move it to Workspace 1. We'll move this to Workspace 1. We'll just do a quick comparison before I wrap this up. And so it is interesting to see what what it looks like. Now obviously I had um, flipped them to um, make it look closer to what you would look how it, it the orientation will match the way it looks if you look at it standing on earth. But anyway, so you can see, so I increased saturation, 
I did a lot more uh, work on the uh, HA region up there. Yeah, some more color. Actually, this one looks a little bit better over here, but zoomed out, it definitely looks nicer. And I like the color that I got in M81. I'm not 100% sold on this yellow core. I mean, I think the core should be yellowish uh, because you have your older stars. Right, all this blue on the outsides coming from the large blue stars. And I wasn't, I was a little disappointed that I didn't, you can barely see the, uh, the little bit of uh, IFN here. And so I did pull it out some more. Um, doing so did introduce noise, so it's definitely a little bit grainier. If you look in there, I also did some work on the stars. I think the stars came out pretty good. Right, especially considering the glass that this particular scope has, the, that FK61. I was getting some flaring in here. I think by pushing the, um, the saturation, that's, I mean, you really see it. My little SV70T has uh, FPL53 glass, and it doesn't flare out quite as bad as these. Now, these don't look too bad, but I... Uh, I actually made a mask and, and individually dialed it back on some of these stars. But anyway, that's pretty much it. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys think of this. Thoughts, comments, did I push it too much? And uh, anyway, if nothing else, clear skies.